everybody. Uh, a little EDM music and a coffee bar is a good way to uh, start the uh, uh, first morning, or first morning for me anyway, of GDC. Um, hope everybody's had a good, uh, good trip in. So as Phil mentioned, this is the intro to Lightship ARDK Talk, which is our augmented reality development kit. Here to give you an overview uh, what it is, uh, what the best features are, how to use it, and hopefully uh, give you some information, but also, also inspire you to, to walk away and try it for yourself. Uh, so as Phil mentioned, my name is Braxton Lanseal, and I lead our partner engineering team. Essentially, my role is to work with our managed partners as well as our community developers uh, to use Lightship Augmented Reality Development Kit uh, to the best of their abilities. So that's everything from, you'll see my face on some YouTube videos and tutorials. Uh, I work with our strategic partners in like a consultative matter to make sure everybody's uh, having a good experience, giving that uh, product feedback to our product teams. Uh, you see me a little bit everywhere, but it's fun. So who's Niantic? You're probably already a little familiar if you're here, uh, but just in case you're not, um, you know, we're best known for Pokemon Go, but we do have several games now that kind of make up our, uh, our portfolio of games. You see we have Ingress, Pokemon Go, Pikmin Bloom, uh, NBA All World just launched, and then you'll also learn about Peridot, which is our uh, uh, AR first, our first AR first uh, game focused around uh, virtual pets. And what's uh, relevant with that for the Lightship is that we take that tech from our games and we try to expose the technology proven that works in our games and bring it to a public facing dev kit. So you see things like uh, Phil mentioned maps. You see the Pokemon Go overworld map. That's actually, uh, you'll hear about it later today, but that's a great example of something that we proved how to make it work in a game, and now we're extracting the, that technology to let developers like yourselves uh, be creative with it in your own way, in your own apps. And you might know that we're focused on really getting people out in the world and exploring. Uh, it's a big thing for us, and with augmented reality, uh, you can see some fancy numbers there about how, uh, how far people have walked, uh, our monthly active users. Uh, it's a global thing, you know, with these real world events. Pokemon Go meetups, community events. So really we're focused on gaming or uh, you know, these AR worlds, AR experiences, um, but really bringing people together and getting people moving and outside, which I think is something that makes us uh, super unique. So that takes us to what we're here to talk about today, which is uh, Niantic Lightship ARDK. So what is Lightship? Uh, it's built on top of Unity, so we're trying to meet developers where they already are. Uh, it's a cross-platform, so you can build to Android and iOS pretty seamlessly and easily. Uh, the big things are the augmented reality features and geospatial features, which we'll talk about uh, several different ones today. And it's currently free to download, so low pressure, go check it out, do some tutorials, uh, get your hands dirty, and see how it works for you. So really, the goal of Lightship is to help you and your users uh, understand the world around us. So I'll define some of these terms if you're not familiar here shortly, but using features such as meshing, semantic segmentation, uh, and other ones. So super simple example, I'll reference Pokemon Go a lot because it's something a lot of y'all know, uh, but think about if you've ever used the AR mode in Pokemon Go when Pikachu is running around uh, on the grass or, the, or around benches and stuff, we're using meshing to really understand that world around us so Pikachu isn't falling through the world or walking through a bench. It's because we're detecting that there's something there and applying those real world physics to it. And the other real uh, differentiator for us is these location-based experiences. So we have some features called visual positioning system, which you hear about either later today or tomorrow, uh, lightship maps, which you hear about later today, uh, and some other APIs that help support those. So you think about when you're walking around, I'll say Pokemon Go again, but you see the, the gyms or these places of interest where there's a real statue or a real mural or a real building. And uh, we're expo we, we know where that is precisely on the map. We know what it's called. We have a little bit of information about it, 3D data about it. And we can expose that to you to create your own experiences at these locations very, very accurately. So bringing us specifically to some of these key features, um, the real uh, crux of any time you're gonna start an augmented reality application using Lightship is our AR session. Uh, you might be familiar with this if you have experience with Unity AR Foundation, similar idea, but this is essentially your one-stop shop to manage your augmented reality experience. So uh, it allows your app to start an AR experience, start those subsystems like meshing and like some of these features that we'll talk about 
uh, and manage those to uh, work properly and manage those life cycles uh, and continue to constantly update. So obviously in augmented reality, uh, you're constantly mo your users are constantly moving. You need to make sure your, da uh, your data is constantly accurate. If a person moves out of the way, the meshing has changed because they're not there anymore. So really handling constant updates and all that frame data coming in to keep your AR experience uh, realistic and accurate. Plane detection, which as the name suggests, allows you to detect and interact with real world planes. Uh, obviously you can see this example here where a car is traversing a living room. So you can imagine, uh, you can see here that like the, the, the ground has been detected as a plane. So you can drive that car on the plane. You can also do uh, vertical planes as well. So detecting walls as well as ground. Um, but really anything that is a flat surface up and down or, or horizontal allows you to, again, similar to meshing but slightly different, really know uh, the environment around you. And then depth, uh, you know, depth is a little bit of a cornerstone for a lot of our features. Is you need to understand depth to be able to properly do things like occlusion or have um, your characters in the right order. So, um, you know, we generate that 3D depth information uh, in real time. And one thing that separates us, uh, we have our own depth algorithms that actually we just leverage the camera pass through data uh, for devices that don't have LiDAR. So I think there are a lot of other uh, solutions that require LiDAR devices to be able to read depth of data and uh, do things accordingly, um, but we do not. Uh, it works both indoor and outdoor. You know, we say it works up to 100 meters. That's the best case scenario. I would say it's, uh, you know, maybe half that or a little less if, if you really want those hyper accurate experiences. Uh, and then as mentioned, depth is really a prerequisite for having a lot of these other features uh, work at all. Then we have meshing. So that's uh, really probably our most popular feature, I'd say. Uh, one way I like to uh, describe meshing, if you see the uh, image in the bottom right there, is think about stretching a bed sheet over the environment around you. So where you get pretty accurate results of understanding the shapes and the geometry of the world around you. Of course, not completely perfect, but very, very accurate, such that you can build experiences and give real world physics to that environment around you. Um, so think about uh, shooting a ball at a couch in AR, and that ball is going to detect the couch is there, bounce off the couch. That's, that would be using meshing to understand that couch is there, give it physics, uh, and have your digital objects react to the real world objects. Occlusion. So, uh, super simple example there on the right, but occlusion is, is essentially refers to uh, placing and moving content without breaking that immersion. Uh, then this is done by that depth estimation, comparing the depth of real world objects versus your digital objects and reconciling what order they should be in, where they are, um, and how they should relate to one another. Uh, so you can see in the example on the right, the, the GIF on the left, no occlusion. Uh, that's our mascot Doty, by the way. Uh, and Doty is dancing sort of into the wall, whereas the GIF on the right, Doty properly dances behind the wall. So occlusion is what's powering that ability for Doty to properly be in that, that Z-axis order uh, of being behind the wall, which this is something I think uh, when I remember when I first got into AR experiences, I kind of take for granted because you're like, well, yeah, duh, just you know, change the uh, the Z axis or the, the Z position and it'll it'll work. But in AR, it's a little more complicated than that. So something that seems really simple, but really also really makes a difference in uh, your experience seeming realistic or not. Because as soon as you see Doty on the left dancing into the wall, you kind of lose that realistic feel, and it's still cool, but it's it's just not quite the same. Okay, a little trouble with the uh, YouTube player here, but this is just gonna be an example um, of using some of those features together. So without showing the video, uh, this experience, actually this is similar to a GIF we saw earlier where you're shooting a snowball in a room. Go back to that one. So if you just focus on the GIF, I'll kind of explain some of those features that are being used there. So of course we have the AR session that we mentioned, which allows your device camera to be used as like your game or app camera. 
and start understanding that world around you. Uh, you can see the snowball bouncing off of the chair there, which you're using meshing to detect that the chair is there. You're, you're detecting that collision of your digital snowball with your, the, the real world chair to give that splat uh, effect. Um, and yeah, and then uh, occlusion as well. So you have that, that ring or the snowball which are properly uh, looking realistically ordered. The ring is not behind the wall. The snowball is bouncing under the table if the gift were to continue. Semantic segmentation, one note that we're having some trouble with videos, if anybody uh, in here is, uh, for future sessions here. Um, semantic segmentation is a feature that allows uh, your app to understand or, and classify the world around you with specific labels. So um, using computer vision, we can look at a uh, camera frame and de determine what is what. <laughs> so in the example here, the camera frame is looking, uh, you take the center, it's looking at a bunch of trees and uh, Lightship is able to determine that's foliage and apply that label uh, pixel by pixel and say, okay, um, this section, you can actually see there's a green outline on the bottom and uh, above the tree and that's, that's determining that that whole section is foliage. You can do the same thing with several different channels. So we have things like sky, ground, water, uh, people, it just came out as well. Um, we have several experimental channels. So this is something we're always trying to find uh, or we're always trying to release more uh, labels and channels for. Um, so things like pets is, a, is, a, is one that's new, uh, TVs, vehicles, snow. Um, you know, I think a lot of people will approach me and ask, well, what's coming next or when, uh, when can we expect this other label? It's something that we're always working on. Uh, we are constantly f training our models, feeding it data to help uh, get high confidence that we can determine in uh, different areas from one another. So working on a lot of things, just getting to a high confidence level to be able to say, okay, we think this is accurate enough that you can use it in your app, uh, which is why some of these are experimental, where we're giving them out a little bit early, uh, which we, they're not quite high enough quality or confidence to be fully shipped, but feel like we're at a pretty good spot where you can play with them yourselves. So this is super powerful. Um, one of the common uh, themes we see with this is if you think about like a materials collection game or app. So you need to send people out to forage for wood or, uh, or water or whatever. A super, super great use case for semantic segmentation because you can go find foliage, you can go find water and then uh, start your experience accordingly. Oh no. <laughs> More video trouble. Um, but this is an example, you can see the sky here so we can still talk through it a little bit. Uh, this was actually an application that launched uh, last year with our developer partners Trigger XR. And they built an experience for Coachella, which is a big mu music festival for those not familiar, um, where you could place your device uh, looking at one of the buildings on the fairgrounds and the uh, iconic Coachella butterfly would fly around it, but you'd give the sky this beautiful pink tinted background. Um, and you can't see it very well there since it's kind of grayed out, but that's what the, uh, the sky is very beautifully pinked out. And then the butterfly actually flies uh, around that building behind the sky to create this really surreal experience. And that's using semantic segmentation to determine what is sky, apply uh, just coloring, applying shaders to it to say, hey, I want my sky to be beautiful and pink instead of gray and cloudy or instead of blue. So another feature is game board. Um, a game board essentially allows you to have object placement, procedural gameplay, and the biggest one I would say is uh, navigation. So that allows characters to navigate a space in AR without you really needing to do anything other than to say, uh, I want this character, this object to go from point A to point B, and Lightship does the rest to determine what paths it can take, what the fastest path is, um, you can also set some other, um, some other variables such as can these characters jump. So in this, uh, in this again, still video here, uh, you can see a footrest where you could actually say I, that footrest should be passable and Lightship will allow for a path to walk around it, it'll, it'll uh, allow for a path to jump up on it and then over it. Um, so a super powerful thing where I think you know, there, there are some navigation solutions out there today. I know uh, if you're like me, you've written your own navigation solutions before. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So this is really nice to be able to just 
um, say, hey, I want this character to go from A to B, and then Lightship will say, great, here's, where, here's how it's gonna get there, uh, and take off. So um, this example here was actually uh, built by Shueisha, and uh, what these characters do is run around uh, this deck here, uh, and really, really cute, so maybe if we get the videos broken, we'll come back to it, but it will, th then they'll just run around, uh, run around people, run around uh, tables and chairs, uh, and it's really, really powerful to see do that all very quickly. We also have shared AR. So shared AR is our networking solution in Lightship. Um, of course, it enables these multi-user experiences where people can connect with one another um, in, in augmented reality. Um, of course, as mentioned in the beginning, this is something that we really pride ourselves on, which is uh, empowering people to do things together. So we try to make that super easy by having a fast networking solution. It's also pretty easy to implement. Um, we have a couple different methods of implementing it. One of those is meant to be uh, pretty hands-off. I want to start a networking uh, session and have two players or four players or five players play together. And one of them, if you're more experienced in networking, allows you to take more control um, and, uh, and really get in the weeds and do stuff. So in this example here, we have a digital ball there, a digital globe, so to speak, and we have three players that they're all impacting that digital object at the same time. So our networking solution uh, allows you to manage the state of your digital objects, the state of your, your game or your experience um, very seamlessly, very quickly, and uh, accurately. So how does that work? Uh, essentially, we have a host or a, a first player, so to speak, um, scan the environment around them. And what that does, uh, actually you can see the steps here, but uh, they scan an object. So in this room, let's say we want to start an experience up here. Player one would stand here with their device. They would scan this table uh, back and forth. And once that is kind of, they've got enough data there, each player will come in and do a similar thing. And what, what happens on our back end is we're trying to reconcile the other player's uh, scan with player one's scan and to determine, okay, where are these people in comparison to one another? And then through that process, we essentially get a very accurate feed of, okay, player one's right here, and because player two also scanned this table, we know they're right there, uh, and then we maintain in world space where those players are in relation to each other. Uh, so once everyone is synced, they're in that shared coordinate space, and then you can begin uh, that, that hyper-localized, uh, accurate experience uh, together. So a few developer project highlights. Uh, what's been made so far with Lightship? <laughs> well, these won't be near as exciting, but I can tell you about them. And you can go check them out on your own. Um, but one of the apps that shipped, uh, our developer partners again at TriggerXR have released an application in partnership with the PGA Junior League, which allows uh, focused at kids, allows people to uh, essentially play mini golf courses uh, together. So that process looks like uh, using your device to find an open space, setting up a, a golf hole uh, in that space, and as I mentioned with that shared AR, uh, you actually set up the area with other players as well. So they're gonna come in, they're going to find that similar space, and essentially you're all going to be localized to the exact same area such that we can play golf together, and we're all looking at the same space, the same hole, um, and then playing some golf. I wonder if I exit presentation mode. Oh, look at that, okay. <laughs> Maybe. That's right. First talk of the day, it wouldn't be any fun if everything worked perfectly the first time. Um, another one also by Trigger XR, uh, Jurassic World Dino Tracker. So uh, in partnership with when, Dino, uh, when Jurassic World launched last year, um, they built an app which actually has dinosaurs walking around the earth around you. Um, so super accurately, super cool. They actually leverage the game board feature under the hood, so uh, these dinosaurs aren't going to be walking into trees, bumping into buildings. They're going to be able to determine the area uh, in the space 
and walk around pretty realistically. So if you ever wanted to walk amongst the dinosaurs, this, was, uh, this might be your opportunity to do it. Okay, a GIF, here we go. Um, so this is uh, built by our, par our developers, Pixel Links, who make the app a Linkser. Um, you'll hear about our visual positioning system uh, later, either today or tomorrow, but this is a super powerful GIF. I think this is one of those that's kind of an aha moment for me or for a lot of people where our visual positioning system at a very high level allows you to uh, localize to a certain area. So we talked about statues or murals or something that Niantic knows in the back end. So in this example, this anchor statue, uh, we know that. We have data on that. Maybe our Pokemon Go players have scanned that enough to where we know the, the long, latitude, longitude, the 3D mesh geometry of it. And um, last year at our uh, first developer summit, our partners Pixel Links uh, developed this application where Dead Mouse, the EDM artist, flies in on a ship. And since we know where the player is, uh, super accurately latches the digital anchor onto the actual anchor statue. So we always tout the term uh, centimeter precision accuracy, but essentially I think this is the best demonstration of that, which is uh, once that we know the player, uh, where the player is relative to that statue, you can do stuff like this where digital objects are absolutely precisely interacting with those real world objects. Um, I don't know, for me this was one of those where I saw it and I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. So a quick how to get started with Lightship, if you all are thinking about diving in or want to read more, what to do. Uh, some prerequisites, some of these are, uh, will be common sense, like a Lightship compatible mobile device. Uh, but things, Unity, uh, you know, the, the typical mobile, mobile setup for the most part. Um, we are actually on version 2.4 now instead of 2.3. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, a lot of that should be familiar to you all if you're developers, especially in the mobile or AR space. And then highly recommend joining our Discord community. That's where a lot of our developers are constantly carrying on the conversation, uh, as well as our developer support team, such as Anu and Mar, who are in there uh, to help developers uh, get through bugs, work with each other better, um, and set up community sessions as well. So we oftentimes do product sessions, or um, you know, maybe we have maps coming out soon. Maybe we'll do a product session where, hey, be the first to hear about it. Come to our you know, our product manager for maps might come in and give you an hour or two hour session uh, heads up before the world knows. So scan that QR code, highly recommend joining that. Um, check out our tutorials and guides. You get to see my face on YouTube if, uh, if you can suffer through it. But no, we have a lot of tutorials and guides to get going. Pretty simple, highly recommend that. Um, and then the forums as well, which are monitored by our dev support team again, which is a place that you can uh, post your own bugs, see, uh, solve your own problems because somebody else has probably run into it uh, as well. So I highly recommend that as well. And then we'll be doing survey, or we'll have this after each, uh, each talk today. But uh, highly, other than the videos not working is the most obvious one. Uh, always interested on feedback and how we can make these sessions better. Uh, more appealing to you all. And I think we're a little short since uh, the videos would have taken up a fair bit more time, but more time for questions, I suppose. Um, let's try one more time, see if we can get any of these working and talk to them. <laughs> 